We're back with episode 7 of our DCS Mission Editor series. Today it's all about events and how we can use them during a mission. First let's look at all the events currently available to us. These are pretty self-explanatory, but we will need more information than what is provided here. You can find more information on various websites or you can find the information yourself through scripting. I personally prefer to run a script and get the data myself for the simple fact that if something breaks in an update, you know how to get the new data and you are not relying on something else to be updated. Let's look at a very simple script with an event handler that will output the data on screen whenever an event occurs. First, we'll create an event handler variable in the form of a table. Then we create a function with the name of the handler, which we will add later. Inside this function, we are going to create another table to store the event data so that we can output it to a message after the for loop has run. Now we create a for loop that will check all entries in the event table so that we can extract each table entry as data for our message. Once this is done, we output the message in DCS and we'll be able to see all of the event data that is being handled. After the function, we will add our event handler. When you create an event handler, DCS will store that information and will execute the function with the same name when an event occurs. As you can see, we have the function myEventHandler being called when an event occurs. Let's copy this code and set up a mission to look at some events. Here I have an A10 client slot sitting on the ramp and nothing else in the mission. If you are looking for specific event data, I suggest making a mission that will trigger only the event you are looking for. Now let's add a do script trigger on mission start, paste our code in, and launch the mission. Getting in the A-10, we see that we have two events happen. One is for the birth of the aircraft, event ID 15, and the other is for the player entering that aircraft, event ID number 20. You could also get the name of the initiator with a little more scripting, but for now that's not really necessary. Now let's go to the F-10 map and look at map markers. When we place a marker, you see that another event has been generated. There is more information available in this event and it can be very useful for doing things while the mission is in progress. As you can see, we can get the text and the position of the marker. With this, we can check the text, and if it matches something we have defined, we can do other things. For a quick example, let's create a script that will drop smoke on a map marker if dash smoke is entered in the map marker text box. Notice that all of the map marker events have the event.idx. We'll check this when an event happens, and if it is true, we will execute more code to generate the smoke. I'm also going to only execute this on map marker removed or event ID 27. This way the smoke will only be deployed when the marker is removed. Next up, we'll trigger the smoke at the map marker position. If you want to learn more about VEC3 positions, check out my working with VEC3 video where we cover it in much more detail. After this, let's go ahead and also add a small message so that we know that the smoke has been deployed. Copying this code, we can insert it into a mission so that we can see it in action. We'll use a do script action with this new code. Let's run the mission and test it. We'll jump in the A10 and go to the F10 map, put a marker just in front of it and put in dash smoke and close the marker. As you can see, the smoke was deployed where we placed the map marker. You can add this bit of code in any script file or even in a do script trigger for any mission and it will work. I hope this short video is helpful in your mission creation. Please consider subscribing and thanks for watching.